Hey, Kingdom Builders, welcome back to the altar. And for those of you joining me here for the first time at Kingdom Wealth Ministries, a special welcome to you. Kingdom Builders and newcomers, I have a word from the Lord for you all today. It is a blessed word that I believe is going to bless many households in this season. So if you are ready for the word from the Lord, somebody type in the comments, let's go, let's go bring forth the word from the Lord. So Kingdom Builders, the Father is showing me that he is causing many of you to make room for his abundant blessings, to make room for his abundant blessings. And many of you have already been doing this. You don't even realize that what you've been doing, what the Holy Spirit has been leading you to do is actually making room for God's blessings. For example, many people have reported to me that just out of the blue, the Holy Spirit has impressed upon them to give away their clothes, to give away their jackets, for example, shout out to you, Joshalina, <laughs> to give away their very expensive clothing material, some inexpensive things, to open up their houses to people that they wouldn't normally open up their houses to, to do good to people that wouldn't even normally be on, be on their radar, to bring new people to church, for example. Even me, myself, this past weekend, I found myself going into my closets, oh Jesus, pulling out my old clothes. Let he who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying today pulling out my old clothes, going down to the donation center of the local homeless shelter and donating my clothes, donating my children's clothes, donating my husband's clothes. And the Holy Spirit moved upon me to do it. I didn't have it in my plans. I had a total, total different set of plans this past weekend. But like me, the Holy Spirit is impressing upon you all to do these things. Why? Because it is making room for the new things that God is doing and for the abundant blessings of the Lord. People of God, I've seen this spring up in my lives many times. Prior to this, right before I launched my ministry, the Lord had me do the same thing. Go in your closets pack up a lot of things, ship it off, give it away. I did not realizing that the very act of doing that was opening up a door, making room for what God would do in my life. Shortly after that, he began to send to me new people to minister to. He began to give me downloads, spiritual downloads, revelation. The revelation of the prophetic numbers came in this particular season. So when the father tells you to make room, it be, it's because it has an impact in the spiritual realm. Somebody type, I'm making an impact in the comments. I'm making an impact and you don't even realize realize that what the Holy Spirit is having you do in the physical realm it is causing an impact in the spiritual realm. Somebody text, I am making an impact in the mighty name of Jesus. So oftentimes when the Lord is scheduling an abundant harvest in your life, he will cause you to make room to clear out some things to get rid of some things, to give away some things. Whose word is this? If this is your word, type in the comments, this is my word. This is my word. The Lord done visited me again. The Lord found me here again. That's right. By his spirit, he drew you here to understand what's going on in the spiritual realm. So oftentimes the father will speak a thing to one of his apostles, one of his prophets, one of his teachers, evangelists, etc etc. to let them know what's going on in the spirit realm so that through us, we can get the information to you. And that brings forth your understanding, but it also brings forth your obedience. If you're catching that, somebody type in the comments, understanding and obedience, understanding and obedience. Glory to God. This is what he is doing in this season. Um, 
I want to read this scripture to you because this is connected to what God is doing in this season as well. Proverbs 8, 16, a man's gift opens the door. Another translation says it makes room. It makes room for him. A man's gift makes room for him. Another translation like the one I just read said it opens the door for him or her and brings him or her before great men or women. Let me read it again. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. A a woman's gift makes room for her. When the Bible says this, it's not referring to gender, gender. So when it says a man, it's talking about mankind. Women are part of mankind. Amen. So the Bible is talking to you too, women, that your gift makes room for you. Your gift opens doors for you. It brings you before great people. Amen. So you don't even realize that the small act of kindness that the Holy Spirit caused you to do is opening up a door for you somewhere. And glory to God, you're about to enter into a season of open doors that you scheduled a long time ago. That as you move forward, as you begin to apply yourself, as you begin to step up in the name of Jesus, you will realize, oh, That was easy. I just walked through that door. No problem with ease. Why? Because you scheduled it in the spirit realm based on the gifts that you have been using, based on the leading and the unction of the Holy Spirit. Who is catching this today? If this is your word, type in the comments. My God, this is my word. My God, you have found me in the mighty name of Jesus. So many of you have begun to make room several ways. You've begun to make room for Jesus, for example, by building an altar in your home by carving out some space in your room where you can give time to prayer and worship. Even your praise and your worship is making room for Jesus, is making room for the Lord to act in your life and on your behalf. It's making room for the heavenly host to go to war for you, to go to bat for you. It's making room even for people to receive salvation. You're making room for your financial blessings, and that's by being a blessing to others. Many don't even realize it, but when you are a blessing to others, oftentimes the Lord responds by blessing you with finances. It's like a form of spiritual encouragement and spiritual currency that as you bless others, the Lord blesses you. A lot of you, your rent is getting supernaturally paid, your electricity bill is being paid. The gas company is working with you when they ordinarily wouldn't. That is not happening by coincidence, friend. That is happening because you scheduled these things into your lives by being a blessing to others. There is a law of reciprocity that whatever you reap, you will sow. And oftentimes, always, it always happens. That when you give, you always get more than you gave, more than you expected. I am praying for somebody right now in the name of Jesus for you to come into this season of more by the spirit of the living God. I schedule more into your houses, more into your lives, more into your businesses in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, type it in the comments. I receive more. I receive more. And may you be a blessing to the kingdom of God with this more that is about to come into your lives in Jesus' name. So another way that people are making room for these abundant blessings is by studying, for example, how to exercise, how to eat right, how to walk in health. You don't realize that you're making room for greater health to enter into your life just by studying 
just by studying how to eat better, just by studying vegan and vegetarian recipes, just by studying how to work out better and to push yourself. You are scheduling abundant blessings in the area of your health just by studying how to defeat cancer, how to overcome cancer, how to overcome this sickness and that sickness. It's going to bear fruit. Even your studies of these things are going to bear fruit. You're making room even for others' salvation. When you invite people into church to come and to go to church with you, when you invite people, for example, by sharing this video, as a matter of fact, go ahead and share this video with somebody you love or even somebody that's giving you a hard time. Glory to God. When you share Christian content that makes room for the salvation of souls, and I talked about maybe in two previous videos that the Lord is bringing forth rewards for the work that his people have done. And when you do these things, you don't even realize how sharing Christian content, sharing an exhortation, sharing a prophecy, sharing something that I put out on my YouTube, glory to God, how it blesses others, but it also blesses you. It schedules a harvest in your life. It brings forth a reward in your life. Why? Because you are helping people to receive the gospel of Christ. And that is no small thing. Amen. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. Be blessed and highly rewarded for the little things that you do. Receive the blessings. Go to the Father and say, God, I have done the things that you have led me to do by your Spirit. And I receive, therefore, the rewards and the abundant blessings that comes with it. You do not have to live in poverty when you know God. You don't have to live in poverty when you are connected to the spiritual realm through Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now is a time for you to come into more and to make room for more in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you some of the things that you need to uh, make room for additionally. The father is saying to make emotional room for the people that he's about to bring, to bring into your lives. For example, he's about to bring new spouses and spouses into your lives. You have to make emotional room for that. There are a lot of women who are going to get pregnant in this season. Hold up. I know a lot of people is like, not me, Lord. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm done having children. Please give that blessing to somebody else. Glory to God. But there are women who are praying for babies. And the father is saying, as you are praying and preparing for these children, for these babies, prepare emotionally for it. The father is blessing, blessing you all with new friends. You need to prepare emotionally for what that looks like, what that feels like to have new friends come into your lives. There are many of you, you ruined old friendships through envy, envy, through jealousy, through gossiping, just by having poor character. Come on, somebody, let's be honest. If that's you, you don't have to type it in the comments, but you know it's you. The father is saying, prepare emotionally for the new people he's about to bless you with, bless you with, because he does not want you ruining relationships and friendships over and over again. So you need to prepare to be emotionally uh, mature for the people that he's going to bless you with. Make room that way. Make room in your house. This is somebody's word. If this is your word, type it in the comments. But I see the Lord saying, and I hear the Lord saying to make room in your houses for new furniture, for new decor, for the new additions. Amen. You have to begin to make room for the blessings that God is about to bring into your lives. Glory to God. Make room in your business for new clients, for the new department, for the new employees. You have to make room for them. You have to make room for them. 
Amen. You cannot put new wine in old wine skins. You have to make room for these new things that the Lord is about to bless you with. Make room in your spirit for through praise and worship. Make room in your spirit through praise and worship. And this will bring about new downloads, new prophetic words and messages, new dreams, new promises. As you praise and as you worship, you make room in your spirit. You make room within yourself for the new blessings, the prophetic blessings the downloads that the Father will give you. And a lot of you, by your fasting, by your fasting, that's making room in your spirit for new graces. A lot of you praying for the grace of healing, for the grace of deliverance. You want to lay hands on people and see them healed. Well, your fasting is making room for that to show up in your life. Whose word is this? This is a word on another level. If you're catching it, type it in the comments. This is on another level. This is on another level. Glory to God. I thank God for the grace that is upon my life and the apostolic anointing to raise up his people in Jesus name. The father showed me that there is, as you are making room, there is also a great casting down, a great casting down, a casting down of idols and altars. Amen. And one of those idols is the zodiac. Now it didn't it didn't really make sense to me like God you gave me this word how does the zodiac what does the zodiac have to do with this but the father showed me there are a lot of you who have claimed to be this sign claim to be this sign oh you're a Taurus you're a Pisces you're a Sagittarius the father is saying a lot of people have made that an idol in your lives first of all you're not even supposed to be talking about that as a believer in Christ as a person who was saved amen so come out of astrology come out of zodiac in the mighty name of Jesus but he is casting down these idols because a lot of people you'll go to the horoscope you'll go and you'll see say with the see what the zodiac has to do with your husband and your spouse the father is saying and take your hands off of the Zodiac. Take your hands and your minds and your spirit off of the Zodiac altar so that you can receive the greater promises of God. Amen. Because you're going to the Zodiac to try to see, am I compatible with this person? Does this person really love me? Are we going to get along? And all these things. And the father is saying that this has been an idol in many people's lives. Somebody type I know what you're talking about, Apostle Kwan, in the comments. Somebody type it in the comments if you, if this is your word. Amen. Amen. So the father is saying that he is casting down idols in this season. And one of the, the idols is the Zodiac. Amen. What does this have to do with making room? Because as you get those idols out of your life, you make room for the one true God, the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to come and dwell with you, to come and show up in ways that he's never shown up before. You have to move out the old idols and bring in the new. You have to move out the things that don't serve you, that have been hindering you and harming you to make room for the king of kings kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. The father also gave me Leviticus 26, 10, which says you will have enough crops to last for more than a year. Let me run that back. It says you will have enough crops to last for more than a year. You will have, you will harvest the new crops, but then you will have to throw out the old crops. Why? To make room for the new crops. My God, a lot of you are living in overflow and you don't even realize it. How was I able to give away so many clothes this weekend? Because I was living in overflow. I had an overflow of clothes, an abundance of clothes, so much that I could give many away and still have some. And I didn't even realize myself that what I was doing was in the scripture where God had given me plenty. 
And the father is saying, now is the season for you to give away the overflow. Why? Because I am bringing even more into your lives. People of God, not for nothing, and I'm not bragging or boasting. And indeed, if I brag or I boast, I brag and boast on our God because he has blessed me. I have a huge house with huge closets. And when I say those huge closets are still, even though I've given away clothing, are still filled with clothes. I have to give away more. Amen. And if there's somebody watching and you don't have clothes, you need clothes. You like my wardrobe. You've seen how I've dressed on Instagram and on YouTube and you like my clothes. I would be willing because I'm obedient to the word of God too. The Lord said, make room. I'm continuing to make room. And some of that making room involves blessing others. I will bless you with some clothing of mine, especially if you live in the Metro Atlanta area. I will send somebody to give you my clothes if you live here locally. But if you don't, then I will ship them to you. I know a lot of people, I can just see it now. A lot of people are going to be flooding my inbox. If I don't respond to you, it's because I've chosen other people to give to. You all don't realize that I receive a lot of messages on a daily basis. So please don't be offended if I don't reach out to you or if I can't give to everybody that emails me or reaches out to me. But I am willing to bless a few people that the Lord will lead me to give to with a wardrobe, with clothing from my own closet because God has blessed me. So when I say that the Father is about to give you an abundant harvest, I know from experience, but I also know from the Holy Spirit that Leviticus 2016, I mean 2610 is true. Let me read it again. You will have enough crops to last for more than a year. You will harvest the new crops, but then you will have to throw out the old crops to make room for the new crops. That is a blessed life. And I speak blessings upon you in the mighty name of Jesus, this continuous cycle of growth and harvest and abundance. I speak it into your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. This impartation of what God has blessed me with, I give it to you as a gift. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I impart cycles of abundance in your life, abundant crops, abundant harvest in Jesus' name, an abundance of finances in Jesus' name, by the authority, by the risen Christ, by the resurrected Christ, by his apostle, I impart unto you cycles, repeated cycles of blessings and prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. There is a law, I spoke about the law of reciprocity. I spoke about, to a certain extent, the law of sowing and reaping. Let us revisit that. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 15. Remember this. The one who plants few seeds will have a small harvest, but the one who plants a lot will have a big harvest. I'm reading in the ERV version. Each one of you should give what you decided in your heart to give. You should not give if it makes you unhappy or if you feel forced to give. God loves the, loves those who are happy to give. Happy to give. I am happy to give. Amen. And God can give you more blessings than you need. We just talked about that through Le Leviticus 26.10. More blessings than you need. And you will always have plenty of everything. Can I just say that there are a lot of people who have been really focused on themselves and what God can give to them. And you, you've been more focused on what God can give to you than what you can give to others. The Father has blessed me tremendously, and I know a lot of you are blessed. And I will venture to say that a lot of you are extraordinarily blessed because your heart posture has been right. You've been focused on, God, how can I be a blessing? More than, God, how can I get, how can I get, how can I get? And hoarding the blessings of the Lord.
And I declare to you that if your heart posture is right and that if you are a giver, this word is for you, that the Lord is bringing to you abundant blessings. And he is saying, make room for even more. If you thought you were blessed before, the father is saying, make room for even more. Yes, the father blessed you previously with abundance. And the father is saying, make room for it again in Jesus name. God loves those who are happy to give and God can give you more blessings than you need and you will always have plenty of everything. I don't know about you, but I want plenty of everything. Don't put any limits on me. The word says I can have plenty of everything. Amen. You will have enough to give to every good work. Every good work. This is a lot of your yours pray prayers. God, I want to have enough to give. For every good work, can I submit to you today? And I decree it and declare it that the Father is about to visit you so that you can have more than enough for every good work, everything that he showed you, everything that has been prophesied to you. The Father is about to bring forth more than enough to do it in Jesus' name. If this is your word type, I receive it in the comments. Glory to God. As the scriptures say, he gives generously to the poor. His good his goodness will continue forever. God is the one who gives seed to those who plant and he gives bread for food. And God will give you spiritual seed. Remember I said, you don't even realize what you're doing in the spiritual realm when you're giving spiritual seed and make that seed grow. He will produce a great harvest from your goodness. God will make you rich in every way. Who wants to be rich in every way? Glory to God. He wants to make you rich in every way, not just in spirit. Not just so that you can say amen. He wants to make you rich in every way so that you can even be a financial blessing so that you can have a richness of grace to impart healing onto God's people. He wants to make you rich in every way, rich with friends, rich with a wonderful spouse, a beautiful spouse, a strong spouse, a committed spouse, rich in every way, rich in your business, rich in your ministry. Amen. Amen. This is not prosperity gospel. This is the word. This is true gospel. It's all inclusive. It's all inclusive. Preach Jesus, man and woman of God. Preach Christ. Preach the resurrection. And as you're doing it, don't neglect to also preach that your people can be made whole in every area of their lives. Don't neglect that because what you will do is give hopelessness to people. God, we know Jesus, we know Christ, but does he also help with our finances? Does he even care that we don't have a roof over our heads? Yes, he does care, people of God. And the Christ that we serve, the resurrected Christ, also cares about your financial well-being. He cares about every area, every area, every area of your life. And he is able to make you blessed and abundant in every area. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know who was watching that needs to hear that. I sense that there is a man or woman of God that you've been really focused on only preaching one side of the gospel and it's making your congregation poor. It's keeping them in poverty. Bring them up out of poverty. Bring them up out of oppression. Bring them up out of Egypt. Bring them up out of slavery. Bring them up out of Babylon by the word of God, the full word of God. And that includes prosperity in Jesus name. Glory to God. Thank God for kingdom wealth ministries. Thank God for Kingdom Wealth Ministries. It is not about prosperity gospel. It is about the truth of the fullness of God. Amen. If you're glad about it, somebody type in the comments. I'm glad I found this ministry. Glory to God. Glory to God. All pride cast down. All boasting. All bragging cast down. Cast down with full humility. 
I say, I thank God for this ministry so that the people of God can be whole and can elevate to their full potential in Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. God gives us seed. Verse 12, the service you are offering helps God's people. <sighs> the service you are offering, Apostle Kwan. You might as well insert your name in here. The service you are offering helps God's people with their needs, but that is not all it does. It is also bringing more and more thanks to God. Has anybody thanked God in this video today? Through this word today, it also brings about more thanks to God. This service is a proof of your faith. The Lord, I'm sorry, y'all. Well, I'm not sorry. God is speaking to me right now, even as I am ministering to you. Who is catching this? Who is catching what is happening in the spirit right now? Success is spiritual. Success is spiritual. And we serve a God who can talk to you, 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 your mommy, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins, everybody connected to you and me at the same time. Amen. Praise the Lord. The service is proof of your faith. And people will praise God because of it. They will praise God that you freely share what you have with them huh? and with all people. They will praise him to see you following the good news about Christ that you openly accepted. They will praise God because you freely share with them and with all people. And when they pray, they will wish they could be with you. They will feel this way because of the great grace that God gave you. Thanks be to God for his gift that is too wonderful to describe. This word is for me. I didn't even realize it, but this word is for me and you. We are part of a greater community. I would always say, especially in the beginning days of this ministry, that we are building this kingdom together. We are building God's kingdom together. Indeed, many of you who have been on this altar for a while, we have touched and agreed in the spirit. So much so that what is being done in my life is being done in your life too. Indeed, this is an altar dedicated to the Lord that as I come forth, I am imparting unto you, but the Lord is also blessing me. And it is a continuous cycle of impartation and blessings and abundance and prosperity and growth and knowledge and wisdom and understanding and power and authority and influence. Glory to God. The Father is saying, make room for the new people of God. Make room for the new new in Jesus name. Make room. I've given you many ways that you can do that. One of the ways, one of the ways that I believe is the most important is that as you come forth and you worship in this season, it is making rooms for making room for you. As you come forth and you give your gifts in this season, the impact in the spiritual realm will be so astronomical. You are going to great heights. Make room for it. Make room for it. Make room in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just ask, oh Lord, that your will will be done. Father God, these people have come forth believing in you, asking for a word, and here it is. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God that you will do quickly and suddenly what you've shown me that you would do in their lives. Father God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that as they make room, oh God, that you will give them blessings, blessings that they don't even have room enough to receive. This is overflow blessings, overflow. But God, according to the rhema word that you've given me, let it be so that nobody is left behind, no blessing is left behind, oh God, that they will have the wisdom enough to expand their territory, expand their storage rooms, that they will expand their tents and their curtains to receive everything as they cast their nets, oh God. Let it be, Father God, that you give them abundant of fish, abundant of crops, abundant harvest in Jesus' name. 
that they won't leave anything on the table, that they won't leave anything in this season, but that they will receive it all in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Glory to God. If you want to sow into this word or into this ministry, you may feel free to look up the information in the description box. All of the information on how you can sow is located in the description box. I will not ask you or give you fake prophecies in the comments about this stuff. People are scamming people out there. Amen. So if you've been visited by somebody who looks like me or has been prophesying in my name in the comments, I can assure you that is not me. Every way that you can sow into this ministry or into this word is located in the description box. In the description box, not in the comments, in the description box. Amen. And if you'd like to join me in my monthly mentorship group, you can find that information in the description box as well. Lastly, I'm taking a few amazing women with me to Costa Rica in September on a women's empowerment retreat. And if you'd like to join that trip, you can find that information in the description box as well. Until next, next time, brothers and sisters, remember what we're doing this for. It's to build the kingdom of God. And I'm so glad that we get to do it together. We're doing it, y'all. We're doing it. Somebody type in the comments, we're doing it in Jesus' name. Go forth and prosper. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.